What's up ladies and gentlemen, no zoo for you here, and something a little bit different today. I know many of you know that I'm a huge Star Wars fan, I'm a huge Boba Fett fan, and for an entire year I've been waiting for the Book of Boba Fett, ever since it was announced in the teaser at the end of Season 2 of The Mandalorian. And now it's finally here, and I'm going to start reviewing these every week as these shows are released, each episode. So we're going to start with the first episode, Stranger in a Strange Land. I'm just going to do a quick recap, then I'm going to go into my overall thoughts of the episode, what I thought was good, and what I really didn't care for. Mind you, I'm an old school Boba Fett fan, 40 years old. I remember him from the original trilogy in the 80s when I actually saw those. So, go back a little further than some fans out there, though there are a lot of fans my age that absolutely love Boba. He is the man of mystery, he's a bounty hunter cold demeanor, and there's been a lot of expanded universe stuff about Boba Fett as well. So it's not like we have a character with only three minutes of screen time and know nothing about him. We know who he is through his father, Django, and we also know who he is through the expanded universe. And we have expectations. So does this show meet our expectations? We're going to get into that. So the show starts off first at Jabba the Hutt's palace. Now you remember Return of the Jedi. Jabba the Hutt was killed by Luke Skywalker, Leia, uh, Han included, Chewie, Lando. Big fight, you know, Pit of Carcoon, Sarlacc, that type of stuff. And that's where Boba got thrown into. A very unceremonious death for such a big badass. We go into the palace and we see Boba Fett. He is lying in what is obviously a bactopod. He took a lot of damage escaping the Sarlacc, or so we think. We don't know what happens yet. We're waiting for that to play out, though. For 30 or 40 years, we, we've been imagining his escape and his survival. And, that, and it's nice that he does. I mean, it's great to have him back. We then cut to the inside of the Sarlacc, where Boba Fett is slowly digesting over the course of a thousand years. It doesn't look very comfortable down there, though I, I was expecting something a little more. Well, it wasn't totally happy with the inside of the Sarlacc, but you know what? It's cool. Boba Fett decides to go over to a stormtrooper that happened to be down there, I guess already dead. No idea how he got in there because stormtroopers weren't there when Jabba's sail barge was blown up. But you know what? He uses him, he gets some air, he needs that air to get out. You see his hand emerging, just like Patton Oswalt said in Parks and Recreation, and Boba Fett survives. How cool! Uh, he looks like crap right now. He's got dirt all over him. He's not feeling the best, and he promptly passes out where a group of Jawas find him and steal all his armor, which they, they got it off pretty easy. I'm very surprised about that. They just pretty much yank it off. If I know my lore correctly, that stuff was pretty much locked onto Boba Fett, and I don't think anyone would be able to take it off of him. But of course, this is not the expanded universe, and this is not the lore we're used to. So these Jawas just strip him of it, and you might remember from The Mandalorian Season 2, Cobb Vanth winds up getting this armor, which is integral to that. But here we are, Boba Fett is in the desert, of Tatooine. He's found by Tusken Raiders and taken into captivity. This this sounds very familiar, like many stories out there, having a rough go, being led through the desert. He looks a little pale right now, a little Uncle Fester-ish, but that's the way it is. Now, a couple things happen here that I don't necessarily agree with. One, there's a Rodian prisoner, and Boba, after cutting himself free, asks if the Rodian wants to escape, who promptly dimes him out. Now, I, I personally don't think Boba would be that kind to someone that he really doesn't even know, has no stake in the game. I, personally, I think he would just cut his ties and get the hell out of there and not think twice about a poor Rodian who is also prisoner. Survival of the fittest, right? But that's what I thought, that's what Lore would have said, but this is officially canon now, so this is what he's gonna do. After God knows how long uh, in the Sarlacc, I, you know, it, it, it's, that's not covered. Was it two days? Was it two weeks? I, I'm thinking it's more a couple of days. So keep in mind, this is right after Luke defeats Jabba. You know, Death Star might be gone at this point, who knows? Even though Boba escapes, He's still caught, he's run down by a massive, and he winds up in one-on-one -on -one combat with, I guess, one of the best warriors of the Tusken Raiders, and he's promptly beaten. Kind of an unceremonious start for Boba Fett. Then we cut back to modern times, which takes place 
after The Mandalorian Season 2. Remember, he already got his armor. His armor has apparently changed. He's got some snazzy new armor, a cool belt, and all this other stuff. And he's got some pit droid looking things putting his armor on for him. Very cool. He can afford all this stuff because now he's a crime lord. He's a daimyo, which is very neat. He then goes with Finnick and holds court where people pay him tribute. Everybody marches in, gives him stuff, in including the major domo for the mayor of Moss Espa, who promptly says, Hey, guess what? We're not giving you tribute. We expect you to give me tribute. To which Boba Fett says, Hey, I'm the crime lord now. You're not getting anything. You can leave here unmolested. So, not a good start with them. The major domo promptly says, Hey, expect some visitors. Of other note, two Gamorrean guards are brought in. They had been guards for Jabba, and then when he died, they were guards for Bib Fortuna. And now, Boba Fett's giving them a chance to be guards for him, to which they pledge their lives. How nice. Boba goes to what can be seen as a pleasure palace or a gambling establishment, in which we get to see that Max Rebo's still alive, our favorite blue elephant. Cool on that. Nice to see him. I don't know how he escaped Jabba's sail barge. I, I've got no clue, because I'm pretty sure he was in there when it blew up. But, hey, he's still around. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, he's a cool character. He's one of those crazy aliens that Bill Murray sang about on Saturday Night Live and Star Wars. So, I'm, I'm fine with this. It, it's, it's a nice little fan throwback. We need these, right? Moving forward just a little bit, two Twi'leks show up. They offer to take the helmets of Boba and Finnick. Finnick's not too keen on that. Boba says, hey, let's, let's give our helmets to them to clean up and do whatever, which I find kind of strange because that helmet is pretty much Boba's life. I mean, that was his father Jango's helmet, and I, I really don't think he would just give it up so freely, not knowing who these people are or what the intents with these people are. Of other strange note, the male Twi'lek has ear cones, which traditionally they don't have ear cones. That's a female-only thing. That's part of their anatomy, but that's neither here nor there, I guess. This is new canon, so maybe they do now. I, I don't know. Anyhow, we get some Flashdance action as Jessica Biel from Flashdance comes out as a Twi'lek named Garza Whip. Kind of an interesting name right there, but you know what? I'll roll with it. She has none of the coloring that their species is known for, although they have several different colorings. So hers is just natural color, which, you know, it's, I guess you want to keep her in that because it, it is Jessica Biel and she is pretty popular and famous. So she is the proprietor of the establishment. Boba affirms to her that he's going to watch over it, make sure everything's okay. And he winds up leaving with... Two helmets full of a lot of cash, to which Finnick quips his look shinier than hers. Very cute. As they're walking out of the establishment, they're attacked by some street thugs who have some pretty cool technology that includes electro staffs and some shields. This devolves into what is one of the slowest moving fights I've ever seen in a Star Wars episode on either TV or in the movies. I, I don't want to say it was painful to watch, but it wasn't very exciting. I don't know why Boba just didn't use his jetpack, fly out of there and blow everyone up. I mean, that, that's what I've, I would have done if I had a jetpack, but no, he decides to stay on the ground and he decides to get jabbed by those electric staffs a couple times. There's a cool scene, though, where he does kind of take one and eh, pretty much slaughter one of the guys, but really the only reason they're able to survive this battle is because the two Gamorreans that were with them when they walked out of the Pleasure Palace disappeared and then reappeared. I, I don't know if that was just a continuity issue that they forgot about, but they come in, they save the day, Boba is getting his butt kick. Uh, he tells Finnick to go after the two surviving members of the thugs. He disintegrates someone, which is pretty cool. He uses his little wrist rocket. Uh, no disintegrations. Well, Darth Vader's not around, so he's going to do whatever the hell he wants. It looks pretty cool, but promptly after that, uh, he's <laughs> in a little bit of trouble. He needs the Gamorreans to get him back to the palace, to his back to pod, which I'm going to touch on in depth here in a little bit. Anyhow, Finnick captures one of the guys. She, she's turning out to be more Boba than Boba is right now, because of course he's the crime lord. The Gamorreans take Boba Fett to his back to pod, which serves as a vehicle for flashbacks, and <laughs> we, we flash back again um do i consider this lazy screenwriting just a little bit i i would have preferred maybe flash forwards or time jumps or something to that effect but that's not what we're getting right here we're getting boba in a back to pod uh because apparently he's not strong enough to fight after five years mind you this is five years after the return of the jedi he's already got 
Leo's armor. He already kicked some stormtroopers' asses. We're going to get into that here in a second. But here we are in a flashback where he hangs out with the Tusken Raiders again. The littlest of them, the youngling Tusken Raider, takes him and the Rodian on some adventure where they see some thugs spray painting a symbol on the side of what looks like Luke Skywalker's old homestead. I don't think it is, though. And then Boba and the prisoner Rodian are forced to start digging for those little bowls that contain water in them. They look like fungus. I don't know exactly what they are. However, Boba's thirsty, and, and we finally get a glimmer of old-school Boba Fett when the Tusken Raider, the, the little youngling, says, No, you can't drink that, and tries to beat him, and Boba Fett promptly shuts that down. However, at this point, that's when the Rodian makes a huge mistake. They're digging, and he happens to wake up something that looks like something straight out of Mortal Kombat. There's an extended fight with some CGI that kind of looks iffy at times. Anyhow, Boba winds up choking him to death with his chains, kind of like what Leia did to Jabba. Very nice throwback right there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was deliberate. Uh, but he wins. He walks back unchained. The little Tusken Raider is happy. He's got the head of this giant beast. He shares it with the entire town. And then the elder Tusken Raider comes out and in a symbolic gesture gives him some water or whatever is contained in that thing. I, I don't know that it's water. Uh, if you remember back to the Mandalorian season two, I, I don't think it was water. It's something though. It's something that provides nourishment. Anyhow, Boba is now in favor with them and that's when the episode cuts off. So what do I think of the episode overall? I'm kind of having The Last Jedi flashbacks uh, where when I watched it, I was very excited about it. When I was driving home, I was like, eh, what did I just watch? And the next day I hated it. Though not, not as bad right here. Not as bad. Uh, I would probably give this episode a 6 or 7 out of 10. I mean, it wasn't great. I don't know if I'd say it is even good good it wasn't terrible and it wasn't bad it just was not really what i would hope for in the first episode of book of boba fett uh, i was hoping we get something a little more exciting i really feel like the mandalorian introduced him a lot better and we're going to talk about that right now because this is going to lead me into my biggest issues with the book of boba fett the first thing i want to touch on is i think the timeline is just completely whack it is jacked up i mean boba was in the sarlacc for what I, I like i said i theorized a couple days you know this is after the battle there and he escapes and now here he is so he's picked up by Tusken Raiders, and what, he wanders as a nomad for five years? Because he's in the Tusken garb when Din Djarin finally meets up with him. Rear Boba shows up on the top of the hill and says, I want my armor back. They get a, get a little standoff. So five years has gone by. Now, the interesting thing about that is apparently Boba hasn't been able to heal himself at all, uh, even though he kicked the crap out of some stormtroopers' asses and didn't need a back to pod. Uh, but now, flash forward after the events of The Mandalorian, uh, where the Book of Boba Fett obviously takes place after that, and a little street fight causes him to go running for a back to pod. So the, the thing that bugs me the most is his introduction in The Mandalorian was awesome. He's kicking the crap out of stormtroopers with a gaffy stick, just basically cracking their armor. This is the Boba Fett that I expected. Uh, and many of us expected and were waiting for. He gets his armor back. He looks badass. The armor looks great on him, which personally, I don't think it looks that good in Book of Boba Fett. I, I know they had to evolve it, but it lacks the character. It doesn't even look like the same armor. It doesn't have the dents anymore. The helmet is clearly different. So badass Boba and the Mandalorian with his armor, which looks similar to his old school armor, even though you can tell it's not the same armor they used in the original trilogy, is on a tear. He's ripping up stormtroopers. He's shooting them. He's doing all kinds of cool stuff. He's saving Din Djarin and Fennec Shan from these stormtroopers. I mean, he is every ounce the Boba Fett that we expected. He blows up some starship transports and makes cool quips. Now we're going to skip over what happened in the episode The Believer and go straight to The Rescue, the final episode of Mandalorian Season 2, where we get more old school Boba Fett. He's got repainted armor, and the armor, in my opinion, looks pretty cool. Still somewhat similar to old school Boba Fett, though still new and unique. 
and this is one of the other huge differences between the Boba Fett that we got in The Mandalorian and the Boba Fett that we got in Book of Boba Fett. The Book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett, is... I don't know. He doesn't really talk like him, in my opinion. He talks too much. He's not a man of few words. Um, now, you can say that his character evolved. That's, that's great. You can say he's a crime lord now. That's great. However, the Boba Fett that we got in The Mandalorian is a lot closer to what I envision him being. And that's evidence in his interactions with the other Mandalorians. I mean, he takes on Koska Reeves. He goes up to her. He does some cool put-downs. He says, well, isn't that the stiffling calling the Quokta slimy? Just with that icy, cold, I don't even care about you type of voice. It just made sense for his character. They get in a stare down. He goes after Bo-Katan as well, basically saying, oh, that's great. You've heard my voice a million times. Well, mine's going to be the last one you hear. That is straight up Boba Fett right there. And that also caused Koska to get in a fight with him, to which Boba fought her to a standstill. But he didn't need a back to pot after this, despite getting slammed into a wall and a bunch of concrete tables getting beat up. No, he just got right back up and he's like, I'm cool. So that's why I think the timeline's off and why I don't understand it and why I think the back to pot is just lazy, lazy writing to force flashbacks upon us, to which I, I don't even like the Tusken Raider flashbacks. I don't think they're that good. So, that's my biggest gripe right now with the Book of Boba Fett. The timeline doesn't make sense. Boba doesn't seem like the same Boba Fett he was in The Mandalorian. And, you know, I, I know a lot of fans, longtime Boba fans, feel the same way as me. I really, really hope the episodes get better because I want this to be good. I want this show to be good. I want Boba to be Boba Fett. You know, that's great, he's a crime lord, but he never was. I'd love to see him just kind of degenerate over the course of the season from a crime lord back to being just an icy cold bounty hunter. Give up on that crap, and you know what? I, I'm probably dreaming right now because this is Disney Star Wars, and I don't think that's the way it's going to go. But anyhow, that's my review and recap of the first episode of Book of Boba Fett, Stranger in a Strange Land. What I think about it, what I feel the issues are with it. Again, I don't think it was horrible. I just don't think it was what what we deserve for a first episode of Boba Fett. There are more episodes coming though, six I believe, seven total, so hopefully it does get better. Uh, I want to know your thoughts though. What did you think about this first episode of Book of Boba Fett? I know a lot of people are kind of split. A lot of people really, really loved it. A lot of people didn't love it, and some people were just right down the middle, but I'm interested in what you think. Uh, let me know in the comments section of this video, and I will catch you all later. Zoop out.